Welcome to another episode of the Ultimate Freedom Teachings video series. Robert Scheinfeld here and welcome to this third episode in the multi-episode video or audio series on what I call TRUE, with a capital T, Prosperity and Abundance. In this third segment, I want to take a look at the answer to the question, why? <laughs> Odds are you found your way to this uh, experience here because you want to experience more prosperity in your life, more abundance in your life, and that filters down into, in general, more money, more stuff, more things, more freedom, more opportunities, whatever, but you want more of it. Somehow you're feeling limited and restricted and you want more prosperity and abundance. So the big zillion dollar question is why? Why aren't you experiencing that right now? And unlike the first two segments in this series, which somebody could have talked about who teaches a variety of different things all over the world, now we're starting to get into some of the things that are really unique about the teachings that I share and the unique pieces of the puzzle that I have to offer that to my bias aren't being offered by anybody else anywhere at all or not in the same way that I do. And it starts to get towards what I consider to be the truthful with a capital T answer to that question. Why? Why are you not experiencing the prosperity and the abundance, the abundance, whatever you've decided that that means to you, whether it's accurate or not, why aren't you? Why haven't you been? Why aren't you now if you did at some other point in your life but you're in a phase right now where you're not experiencing? Why? What's the answer to that question? Well, <laughs> depending on the things that you've studied, the things that you believe in, the things that you've learned, the things you observe growing up, whatever, there are a lot of different answers to that question that you may have in your mind. And most of them point towards something wrong with you. <laughs> you, uh, you don't have the skill. You haven't developed the skill. You've got some lurking, sabotaging, limiting beliefs in your subconscious mind that are blocking you or sabotaging you. Um, you uh, aren't doing the right things. You're doing the wrong things. Um, and, all, and then there's all these people, battle cries, saying, hey, I can help you solve whatever that problem is. And there's all kinds of different prescriptions and techniques and things you can listen to and things you can watch and things you can do to change your mindset have more of a prosperity, consciousness, whatever it is. And so there's all kinds of reasons for why you're not experiencing it now. I'm going to invite you and I'm going to warn you. Uh, if you're aware of the teachings that I share, what I'm about to say won't be as much of a shock to you or a shock at all. But if you've come to this video uh, embracing a variety of other teachings and systems and methods and models, I'm going to warn you that you may not like what I'm about to say here. It may seem like it's bad news. To me, the truth is, with a capital T, it's not bad news at all. In fact, it couldn't be more opposite. It's the most positive news in the world. And it opens the doors to true with a capital T, transformation with a capital T, true prosperity and abundance versus the fake prosperity and abundance that most people seek and work so hard to try and achieve. So my answer to the question is, if you are not experiencing prosperity as you would define it now, abundance as you would define it now, the reason is from a big picture, and then there are subsets, more specific underlying of that. But the big answer to the question is because it's not part of your story. It's not part of your life purpose or your mission for that to be happening right now or at all, depending on how big your dreams or your visions or whatever might be. Now, I've talked about this. You can find stuff on my blog at robertscheinfeld.com. You can find stuff in my YouTube channel if that's how you happen to be looking at this. There's other things in the podcast if you happen to be listening to this about this. But one of the unique pieces of the puzzle that I offer, and I'm speaking very generally, I can get very general, I can get very specific, I'm going to speak very general now. All of us come into this life with a specific story that is intended for us to experience. It's generally called a mission or a life purpose in a lot of the spiritual, metaphysical, or other kinds of teachings. And that limits and restricts, and it determines what's going to happen and when. So the truthful, my bias, you can do what you want with it. My bias is the truthful answer to the question is, why have you not been historically experiencing the kind of prosperity and abundance that you want? Why aren't you now? Uh, the answer to the question is because historically or now, 
It's not part of your mission or purpose for that to be happening. Now, does that mean that you just kind of sit back and say, well, <laughs> okay, fine, I'll let go of my desires for this or that or whatever. Sometimes in some stories, yes, that ultimately becomes what happens. But I'm not suggesting that at this point. There's, a, there's another opportunity here. But that's the big picture answer. That's the big picture answer. If you study stories, if you take a look closely at the novels, the fiction that you read, if you love to read novels and great fiction, if you look at the TV show episodes, if you like to watch TV show episodes where you get really bonded to the characters and you tune in every week to see what's going to happen to them, or if you love movies or other forms of stories and you look closely through a filter of prosperity and abundance, since that's what we're here talking about, what will you see? you'll see that there are characters that have a lot of money. And there are characters that have very little money that are struggling to varying degrees. And you see people that are okay. They can pay their bills. You know, they're not rich. They're not living a luxurious lifestyle, but they're fine. They do what they do. They pay their bills. They live the way they live, whatever it is. And you'll see people in movies. You'll see people in TV shows. You'll see people in novels, particularly if they're series, multiple books in a series of novels that at one point didn't have a lot of money and then did. At one point had a lot of money and then lost it and didn't. Money is excellent, what I call raw material and building blocks for stories. And whether you have a lot, you have a little, it fluctuates, it changes um, as you get older at various points in your life. It, it opens the doors to different kinds of story opportunities, different kinds of things that can happen. It closes the door to other things that can keep your focus very limited and keep you very focused. What's coming to my mind right now is I remember seeing pictures of horses that were pulling carriages or whatever, and they would have these blinders on so they couldn't look to the sides. They could only look straight ahead. Money is a great thing to push on in our stories as a raw building block for stories, for making things possible, experiences, other kinds of things that I go into a lot more detail on in the, both the true prosperity and the ultimate freedom teachings that I offer. It's a great thing to push on. Because it changes everything. And whether there's a lot of money, a little money right now, a whole life, whatever else it is, it supports the stories perfectly exactly with what's happening. And again, I realize there's a lot of people, maybe you, that don't like that message. It makes you seem like you don't have a lot of power, like you're not in control of your life, like you just have to settle, like you have to give up on dreams and whatever. And I'm not saying that, although the reality is that happens a lot. <laughs> when somebody gets into a truthful with a capital T relationship with this human experience, as I call it. In my own story, at the time of this recording, which is uh, coming towards the end of 2015, I'm 58 years old. And if I look back from, I first started earning money when I was in my 20s, uh, when I left college. And so that's, let's say, it, it wasn't right when I was 20, but for simple math, let's just say there's been 38 years where um, I've been earning money. And if I look at those 38 years, there's been times, particularly when I was younger, that I was okay. You know, I could pay my bills. I wasn't living like a king. It wasn't a lot of luxury, but I could pay my bills. There wasn't a lot of pressure or stress on me. Then there were times where there was huge stress and pressure because stuff had happened and I built up a bunch of debt and I couldn't pay my bills. I've had all kinds of experiences and I've had experiences where there's been huge amounts of money for long periods of time. And I've had periods where there's been huge amounts of money for long periods of time, living very, very well from a traditional definition. And then all of that disappeared and all of a sudden there was limits and restrictions and pain and struggle and stress as it was perceived. And all of those things contributed perfectly to my story. And in my case, the underlying theme for all of it was taking me deeper and deeper and deeper into truth with a capital T. And I see that so clearly right now that the amount of money that I had at every single point on my journey including when I was in a child, when I was a kid growing up in a family that had a lot of wealth, as you probably know, you may not know my story, was perfectly designed to support this unique Robert story. And the same thing is true with you. So the truthful answer to the question is of why aren't you more prosperous right now? Why don't you have the amount, the stuff, the things, the income, the net worth, whatever it is that's part of Why don't you? is why haven't you, or why did you, and then you lost it, whatever your unique situation is, is because what's happening is the perfect thing that's been happening to support your story. 
Now, you may know, if you know me, if you've been in my sphere of influence for a while, I love the Harry Potter stories, the books and the movies. And if you look at the Harry Potter stories and you look at the main characters, you know, Harry Potter, you may know this, you may not, his parents died and they left him rich. Money's not an issue for him. He's got a ton of money. He's got a vault full of gold that his, that his parents left him. Another main character in the Harry Potter stories is a guy named Ron Weasley. And his family really struggles. They're not poor, but they really struggle. And then there's another main character in the Harry Potter stories, Hermione Granger. And it's, it's not really clear. At one point, it's revealed that her parents are both dentists and they live a comfortable lifestyle. Money doesn't seem to be an issue. They're not rich, they're not poor, but money doesn't seem to be an issue. And those are the three main characters. And then there are other characters in the story where you don't know how much money they have and you know there's other characters that appear to have a lot or don't. And J.K. Rowling, the author of the Harry Potter stories, designed that and wrote for certain amounts of money for certain characters in order to support the unfolding of the story. Ron Weasley and the Weasleys family and the Harry Potter stories, because they don't have a lot of money, it sets certain things into motion that supports those characters and their unique journeys and their unique stories unfolding. And the same thing with Harry, that money isn't in an issue. And it's the same thing with you and it's the same thing with me. So that's the big picture answer to the question. Underneath that is, very often, and it's underneath that because that's the most important answer and the most important thing I'm wanting to communicate with you here. But underneath that, and this has to do with what I call phase one, phase two, and phase three of the human game that you may be aware of, you may be not. If you're not aware of it, you'll see a little thing on your screen right now. You can go to my website. You can take a free training that will ground you in the basics of what I'm talking about here. Uh, but the uh, underneath all of that is, even though exactly what's happening right now or has been happening in your life is part of your story and a restricted money supply may be part of your life for the rest of your life. If you look around the world, if you look around at people that you know, if you look around at people that you see in the media, there are certain stories that are just not designed to have a lot of money in them. It isn't supportive to what that life, that journey, that story, that mission, that purpose is all about. And, and a lot of those times the people whose stories don't include having a lot more money or being very prosperous according to tradition, they don't want it. They're totally content where they are. And then there are people whose stories are never to have a huge amount of money, whatever it is, but they want it. And, and so what's happening in their story, maybe with you, happened to me at various stages, is they don't have it and they're struggling against it and they're trying all these different strategies and techniques and changing their mindset and they're rewiring their brain and subconscious and all this stuff trying to get more money and they don't and there's always this struggle and frustration from not there's all kinds of different things but if you study novels as I said if you study movies if you study TV shows there is change there are characters that at one point in their story are struggling with money and at another point in their life they're not it opens up and sometimes there's ups and downs there's a little there's a lot there's a little there's a lot which is what's happened in my story a lot but within stories, within mission and purpose, there is the possibility for these things to change. And that gets to the second answer to the question. And that's where I'm going to end this video because we're going to go more deeply into it as we continue into the series. Remember, this is a series. This video, the first and second, aren't intended to be a complete story. I'm inviting you to come with me on a journey through this series. This series, little puzzle pieces, little pieces, and then at the end, it'll combine to a big picture and a conclusion and a prescription and a what do I do about, you know, how do I, whatever. But here the pieces that I wanted to give are my bias on the truthful with a capital T answer to the question, why am I not more prosperous now? If that's what's happening with you, whatever that looks like, whether it means that you're having trouble paying your bills, you're fine paying your bills, you just want a bunch of stuff that you can't have right now, whatever it looks like. Underneath it is, Within the context of the story, within the context of the mission and purpose, there is something that is blocking the flow of abundance. And here I am not talking about the party line stuff, about subconscious beliefs and subconscious mind and wiring of the brain and all these different kinds of things that you probably study and you probably tried to change in order to increase. Uh, I'm talking about something completely different. I'm talking about a completely different kind of a block 
that's blocking you from experiencing more prosperity that is in fact part of your story. But I also want to communicate it isn't part of everybody's story. But if you go down certain paths, you've studied internet marketing, you've studied this, you've studied metaphysical or esoteric that or success techniques or whatever, the party line is anybody can get rich, anybody can have a millionaire mindset, anybody can this, anybody can that, and my bias is not true. It's not part of everyone's story for that to happen, but if it is, ultimately, for there to be true prosperity, which we're going to get more into in future episodes of this video, which isn't just about money and stuff and things and net worth and finances, it's about uh, an entirely a lifestyle, it's about your whole life, it includes fulfillment, it includes joy, it includes happiness and peace and a lot of other things, it's a big picture. In order for that to happen, you have to know what this block is that's blocking the experience of that. You have to know what it is. With brutal honesty, you have to see that. And you have to then find out how to remove that block. And that's the unique piece of the puzzle that I, um, <laughs> that I offer, is giving people clarity on what's really blocking you. The party line in so many teachings, personal development, spiritual development are, this is blocking you, and underneath that there's this, underneath that, underneath that, underneath that, down then there's a core. What's at the very bottom? What's the real block? What's the big block? That's what I discovered, because I worked my way through all those other layers of all those things that were supposedly causing the problem, and I did the party line stuff, and it didn't change anything until I got to the core. And when I got to the core, what's the real block? What's underneath all of the stuff that typically gets talked about? What's that big block, capital B's? And how do you remove that? That's what we'll be talking about in future episodes of the series. So that concludes this third episode. Uh, again, I realize there may be, whoa, 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 <laughs> Robert, don't stop there, you know. That's what this episode was designed to communicate, just that. The real answer to the question is, Whatever's going on in your life with money, with prosperity, with abundance is not a mistake. You did not screw up. It's not a problem. It's nothing you did wrong. It's nothing that you aren't doing that you should. It isn't a skill that you don't have that you need to develop. All of that can appear to happen in the story, but the real reason is it's exactly the way it is now, like it is with all stories and all characters, with everything that happens to them, not just money and prosperity and abundance. It's because your story is unfolding beautifully, it's unfolding perfectly, and it has been all along. And whatever's been going on with the money supply has been brilliantly written by who you really are to support the unfolding of the story. Even if, and I know this intimately, this experience, even if you haven't liked it and you've struggled against it and you've ranted and raved and been angry and frustrated and whatever at not being able to change it, all of that has been a perfect part of your story. And... There is a way for all of that to change. Either the way you're feeling about it, what's happening with you day to day as it relates to all of this, and also the actual supply of prosperity, abundance, money, stuff, things, whatever that appears in the story. And that's what we'll get into in future episodes. So on that note, I'll say bye-bye for now. Uh, I perceive this, and maybe I'm wrong and biased, I perceive this as being a relatively controversial episode, so love it, hate it, think I'm an idiot, think I'm crazy, think I'm whatever, uh, really opened your eyes, um, really made you think, whatever else it is, I invite your comments, your shares, whatever, your accusations, your criticisms, whatever it is, below wherever you happen to be experiencing this. And I'll look forward to our next form of contact as this series continues. Again, this is just episode three. I have in mind a bunch of other episodes planned in this True Prosperity and Abundance series. Okay, bye-bye for now. If you'd like to get more information on what you've just discovered, go ahead and click on the Learn More button that you'll see appearing in a few seconds.